Hello everyone, I'm Vikram P. Maduri here and welcome back to the discussion on SAP BW FAQs for interview preparation. So this is the part two of the FAQs uh, that we are discussing and in the previous session I discussed a couple of uh, around 15 question answers and uh, I'm going to discuss the further question answers in this and um, let's move on to what exactly is uh, an infoset. An infoset is an info provider giving data by joining data from different sources like uh, DSOs and mask data. You can also do an auto join in an infoset. So this is an advantage. Uh, infosets can also be used to combine transactional data with mask data. For example, if you have quantity in the transaction data and uh, you have price on the attributes of the material, then you can have an infoset with transaction data and material where you will be available to do the calculations based on uh, material price index. So another usage is if you have a DSOs, uh, you can disable BEX reporting and use the DSOs in the infoset for reporting, which leads to improved performance. So simple logic is uh, why do we have to actually go for infoset is infoset can combine data from your cube and your attribute attributes of your mask data so or you can combine the data from dso and mask data so any data that we have to relate with the transactional and master data together can be done in infosets this is what is the primary uh, advantage of infoset and uh, yeah of course you can use that for uh, if you use that uh, infosets you can have the advanced improvements in the performance of a report so what are the non-cumulative key figures so there are key figures that are not summarized unlike sales example uh, headcount and inventory amount they are always shown in relation to a point in time so for example if we ask uh, we, we, we will ask how many employees we had as of last quarter so we don't add up the headcount so uh, basically this is non-cumulative key figure where we have a reference with the time so what performance improvement can we do for reporting? So this is something which is a very important uh, question and uh, some are uh, some uh, some points here are related to the latest uh, BI 7.0 and BW 7.5 but uh, some might not be relevant here. So I'll just uh, explain you things which are relevant and um, which we can do for performance of uh, improving, improving the performance of uh, a report. So we can build repo aggregates. So uh, if at all, if the cube is having huge data, we can build aggregates on it and uh, get less amount of data on which we can build the reports, which will be, uh, which will perform faster. And then we have OLAP cache. You can do the OLAP cache uh, where we have to clear the OLAP cache so that like, it performs better. Pre-calculated web templates can be can be adapted so that like uh, we can have the easy calculations and all. Use small amount or result data as starting point of any queries and do the drill down. So about reporting on DSOs and use infoset containing DSOs for reporting. So if you use uh, exclusion in reporting, that's a uh, exclusion symbol the indices are not used so avoid using the exclusion but use inclusion so it's better to use ex inclusion than rather than exclusion exclusion will will you know degrade the performance use the read mode uh, always uh, when navigating and expanding hierarchies so use compression on info cubes such as, uh, since the e table is optimized for queries and create additional indexes run database statistics often so use uh, secondary indexes on dso active uh, table and use rsrt transaction to look at the ex, uh, explain plan statement so if you are if you are uh, running a query on an info provider with non cumulative key figures then suppress uh, summary line items the totals and what are the options when we when defining aggregates so group according to characteristic values, uh, hierarchies and fixed values. So basically uh, we can use uh, characteristic uh, characteristic uh, nodes and uh, text nodes. So those are the things that we have. For example, if you have zero country characteristic uh, and only US is reported on, then you can create an aggregate only for the country US, US uh, blank none. So what we can do here is like we can have uh, fixed values and we can also have a uh, uh, text node uh, characteristic node and text node so what are the best options for uh, characteristics like f4 help for 
query definition and execution. So this defines how the data is displayed in the query definition screen or when the query is executed. So options are from the data displayed, from master data table and from dimension table. So for example, let us assume that you have 100 products in total in your material master. So 10 products available in a cube and in BEX you can display only at two products. The following options are the product will display different data. So selective data only will display two products. Dimension data will display 10 products and from master data it will display 100 products. So what is the difference between amount, quantity and number type key differences, key figures. So amount, quantity is always combined with units. For example, sales will be linked with linked to currency and inventory will be linked to quantity in units. So in your design, if you don't, don't need uh, units, then you can use, should be using the number or integer. It also improves the performance. So if at all, if you have to have a unit, then you must go for them. Otherwise you can avoid them. When coding the ABAP transfer rules, transformations, what are the important uh, variables you make use of? So when we are doing the transformations, we have result, written code and abort. So written code is something which we uh, normally, normally it's by default uh, uh, added in the DSO when we created the uh, DSO. So result is the, this result uh, gets the result of the ABAP codes. The final, final value should be passed to a field called result, which will be in the implementation of the class which we have in the transformations and then we have the written code you set this to zero if everything is okay else this record is skipped so and then we have about set this to a value not to not zero to about the entire package so what is the use of time distribution option in the update rules so this option is used to distribute uh, data according to time. For example, if the source contains calendar week and the target contains a calendar day, the data is split for each calendar day. Here you can select either the normal calendar or the factory calendar. So this is what we can do in the uh, time distribution option. So what are the types of key figures? amount quantity numeric integer date and time other key figures in which amount and quantity must be followed with either a currency or a unit it's mandatory and how would you optimize the dimensions so use as many dimensions as possible for performance improvement we should always uh, use as many dimensions as possible uh, assume that you have 100 products and 200 customers let's say this is a uh, assumption that we are making in uh, in one of the examples so make one dimension for both the size of the dimension will be 20000 so 100 into 200 make that's an option one and the option two is make individual dimensions one for product 100 rows and another one for customers that will also will be actually this should be 100 rows so the total number of rows in the both dimensions will be 300 rows. Uh, basically what we are doing here is like uh, we are making it for customers and uh, uh, customers and uh, products separately. So obviously the option two is better when we are actually segregating that particular number of uh, di number of characteristics into two different uh, dimensions instead of one dimension. So even if you have more than one characteristic per dimension, you, you should do the math considering the worst case scenario and decide which characteristic may be combined in which dimension. So, uh, I mean, like wherever, basically what exactly we are going to do at the dimension level is, uh, we are going to segregate the data or segregate the characteristics based on the, uh, on familiarity. Like for example, like if employee details have been stored in two different, uh, dimensions so we would better load employee number employee name department and all these related uh, stuff in one dimension and in another dimension we, we might store the address phone number contact details and all this stuff so now what I, what exactly we are doing is we're segregating into dimensions so the more you segregate into dimensions the better it will be for us to you know uh, uh, do the processing on it what is the line item degenerated De or generated uh, dimension so it is the it is a it is a size of a dimension of a cube is almost the same as the size of the fact table you define that dimension as a line item dimension for example if you have 100 uh, 100 characteristics in one dimension and 100 100 fact, 100 uh, key figures in the fact table then that particular uh, dimension is called line item 
dimension so for example if you store the sales document number in one dimension one dimension in a sales queue usually the dimension size and the factable size will be the same so when you add the over, overhead of uh, lookups for a dimid and sids the performance will be very slow so by flagging it as a line item dimension the system puts the sid in the fact table instead of dimid for the for the sales document number this avoids yeah so this this avoids one lookup into dimension table dimension table in is not created in the case so only one characteristic is allowed per line item dimension and for f4 help the complete mass data is displayed which takes more time for display so what is a marker in non cumulative cubes in non cumulative are stored so first of all what is a non cumulative cube which does not have reference with time Okay, using a marker for the current period a marker is nothing but nothing but a pointer referring to a time period so non cumulative uh, in non cumulative uh, uh, cubes are stored using a marker for the current period so a marker is nothing but a pointer referring to a time period so for example in inventory cube marker can may refer to the inventory levels as of yesterday something like that so what is the use of colon uh, as an authorization value so this is uh, something which is very important so it enables queries that do not contain an authorization relevant object that have been checked into the info queue so it allows summary data to be displayed if the user does not have access to detailed data so for example if you create two authorizations for one user uh, one with sales organization and customers and the second with the organization and thousand and customers the user sees all customers for sales organization thousand and only summarized report for the other sales organization so that is that is a, a reason we use the cool and thanks for watching this video and uh, i'm going to explain you further in few uh, in other uh, videos like uh, uh, on the system as well uh, uh, where exactly we have to do uh, certain things uh, you know what are the questions that been asked in the interviews regularly so i'd be covering those value, those things in the coming uh, sessions of um, faqs so yeah and uh, do subscribe to our channel if at all if you are looking for uh, you know preparation on sap or any of the softwares uh, uh, in the market for getting a job yeah. thanks and have a nice day